Thank you. For the record, my name is Jessica Kuzno. I'm a parent of a child in Sio School District's ORCA, as well as two children in Tiger Tualatin School District. I had indicated on the sign-in sheet that I have written testimony and did bring it, but listening to the questions up here, I've significantly changed my testimony. So I'd ask your indulgence in letting me submit that later on today. Uh, my husband and I are both well-educated graduates of the public school system with both undergraduate and graduate degrees from public universities. Despite the fact that my family could afford to send me to private schools, I graduated from a public high school and continued on academic scholarship through public college and law school. It is this interest and belief in public education that I came to looking at my own children's education with. When my oldest son started kindergarten, we were excited to put him on the bus and send him to the big kids' school to learn. Again, despite a financial situation that would have allowed us to send him to private school, we chose public education. That first year was an eye-opener for us. I remember talking with his teacher who asked if I thought he was learning a lot in class. My response was that the hour he spent with me at home was far more educational for him than the time he spent at school. Despite this initial setback, we found that the elementary school was wonderfully accommodating to him, both before and after he qualified for the TAG or Talented and Gifted designation. And we were excited to see that the public schooling model was still at work. With this background, imagine my surprise when he entered middle school, and I was told that not only were there no gifted classes available to him, they were unwilling to adjust the work level to match his tested abilities. In fact, they told me more than once that I would have to resort to getting an independent education plan, or IEP, for him if I wanted to ensure that he was getting higher level work than his age-based classmates. It saddened me to see that the TAG designation and regulations were not enough to motivate them to educate their brightest students. At that point, I began looking at different options. I investigated the local private schools and even looked briefly at homeschooling options. However, I still wanted to believe that public education would be able to meet his abilities. As a public school chartered through Sio School District, I have found that ORCA is the best of both worlds. I am able to ensure that my son's education is not being sacrificed and he is still getting the important public school education that I treasure. Virtual schooling has allowed for his level of individualized education or for a level of individualized education that I could never hope to enjoy at our local middle school. Instead of spending his time bored, waiting for the other students to understand or the teachers to assign more work, he is challenged to complete as many assignments in a day as possible or to spend the excess time in his day volunteering within the community. In addition, the assignments themselves are in many cases far more rigorous than he was receiving at his old middle school. At this point, I would like to take a moment and point out that I take umbrage to this description of my child's education as homeschooling. He is not homeschooled. He has somebody else besides me setting up his curriculum, meeting with him on at minimum a weekly and frequently a daily basis to discuss his assignments and the individual work that he is doing. I act as a proctor, little else. Orca's future, as well as that of the other virtual schools, now hangs in limbo. Senate Bill 767 would hold these schools hostage to a system of waiting and regulations that would cripple them beyond repair. The provisions and task force called for within Senate Bill 767 create a moratorium on the growth of these schools, as well as the issuance of waivers allowing it to operate at its current level. Although there is disagreement as to whether ORCA should be subject to the waiver provisions within ORS 338.135, the school has applied for one with the Department of Education. The department has since stated that they are interested in waiting to see the outcome of virtual charter schools at the legislative level prior to approving any waivers. Unfortunately, if these waivers are not granted, virtual charter schools may well disappear at the end of the coming year, the 2010-2011 school year as an option for our students, making moot the completion of the task force work. Indeed, whatever the intent of a legislator voting yes for the bill, the de facto result may be to close these schools. Additionally, there are no virtual charter school parent or charter school representatives listed in the task force makeup. While I agree with the need for the study of virtual schooling, it is unseemly that those stakeholders who are most affected by the decisions of the task force are left entirely out of its decision-making process. The lack of a balanced group means that they will be no better informed about the issues than we are now. 
Indeed, I understand that the sponsors are willing to add other parties to the table. As a practicing attorney, I have learned that the value of promises being put in writing is immeasurable. I have had to spend innumerable hours trying to untangle contracts where intent was not clear, and I would hesitate to put that restriction on a task force. I understand that our problems, or my personal problems, with the local public school district are not the same as everyone's. In fact, my oldest child's issues have not been the same as my younger children's, and they currently remain in the local public elementary school, where I am also president of the PSO and a member of the $1.3 million Bridging the Gap Foundation fundraising effort. So I support the local public schools just as much as I support ORCA. It is that point that causes me to feel so passionately about this situation. Not all children are the same. And with those differences comes different learning styles and needs. As noted in ORS 338.15, these differences are something that we should not only celebrate, but encourage and foster as innovation becomes more important with the education system. And the more children we can continue to competently educate through high school and above, beyond in any way necessary is something to strive for. It is with this in mind that I urge you to vote no on Senate Bill 767. Today and other days I have heard concern about small districts essentially poaching students from the other school districts around the state. It is my understanding that there are 149 of the 199 districts represented in ORCA. However, one third of these have less than five students going to ORCA. And 75% of those have less than 20 students going to ORCA. These, these uh, students often have no other alternative. And in my personal case, there is no other alternative. As much as I would love to keep my oldest son in Tiger Tualatin School District, there is no comparable program. And although they are working towards a partial online curriculum, it is nothing as extensive or as able to accommodate his needs as what we've been offered with SIA's ORCA. Thank you for your time. I'll leave you later with my letter as well as a letter that my 11-year-old son wrote to the Senate committee when, he w when it was being debated there. I'd be happy to answer questions with you and offer any other input you'd like. Thank you very much.